Hello, and as I mentioned earlier in the announcement, um, I'm going to create a video to look at report number one and give you some ideas as to how to um, approach and research this paper. So to actually find the overview of the um, report, what you need to do is go down to week one, what is science, and at the bottom you have report number one. So, this report number one, this is looking at the impact of humans on the environment between different countries. What you're going to be doing is analysing population change, okay? And by analysing change, you need to be looking at it over time, not just one snapshot on a, of um, one year. And below is a list of countries that you could possibly choose. If you do not like these countries, you could always... Uh, email me and I'll approve or disapprove uh, the choice of country that you pick. And you'll also, at the same time, look at the environmental problems within this country. So, in this report, you're going to analyse and, and explain the changes in population structure, the ages, the um, birth rates, the death rates, the fertility rates, all these different sorts of things, which once we go through the course, what we'll do is there's a large proportion of notes relating to um, population. It'll make this a lot easier to do. So, um, this report should be about five pages long, um, not including diagrams. It should be fully referenced and include a bibliography of sources used for your material. The textbook is a good starting point if you have one. If you haven't, it's a lot of research information relating to countries out there. Okay, It's not adequate to only use one research um, source. So use a few sources to get the information required for this paper. So, first thing you do, choose a country. Just put a list of countries and thing to think about is, you know, can you get information relating to population? Can you get information relating to the environment? How large is that country? You know, if you chose to do somewhere like China, for example, think about the size of chi the population in China. Or if you did a country like Luxembourg, think about the size of the population in Luxembourg. Is it too big? Is it too small? Is it too vast? Somewhere like Russia, is the country's landmass too big and difficult to analyse? So the choice is yours. It's important to choose a good country. You can make this easier or harder for yourself, depending on what type of country you choose. So be careful. So the first thing, collect research material relating to your country's demography and its environmental problems. Okay. Then in the task, the first task that you've got to do is you're going to look at your chosen country. And what you need to do is just do a general introduction. Explain it a little bit. This isn't, you know, comprehensive, but just give me an idea. Some of these things are going to affect the population. It's geography. You know, is it mountainous? Has it got deserts? What type of soils has it got? All these things may affect population, but it may also affect things like the um, environment and the environmental problems. So it's geography. It's location. Where is it in relation to other countries? Are other countries polluting and affecting this country? Are people migrating into the country that you've chosen from another country? So. The geography, its location, do some general background to this. Its level of economic development. Is it classed, so say, as developed or developing? Okay. Its major resources. Say the country is very agricultural based. It might be that that agricultural based country is also very traditional, traditional in its views to, say, um, the idea of family, of children, the number of children that people have. Okay, or it might be that it's, it's highly industrialized and it's got lots of major industries. How's that going to affect the environment? How's that going to affect, say, the concentration of people if people move to those industries? So that look, relates to the next part, which is also urbanization. What's the major cities in your country? Where are people moving to? What's the type of transportation which can affect a number of different things? The spread of things like economic resources, but also medicines, which may affect sort of like health. Also ideas. 
Give me a brief history if there's something that's important in its history that may affect the environment or um, the environment or its population. Social cu and cultural implications. What's its religion? What's its social norm? What's its, you know, anything about it that's going to affect various ideals within that country? Also, you may be want to look at its political system. How is, say, birth control viewed within this country? So that's task one, a general overview of your country. Things that you think are going to affect both the environment, but also not just the environment, um, but also its population. What's influencing it? Right, task two. From the information collected, produce a written analysis of the changes that have taken place in your country's population structure. Okay? So give reasons for these changes and try to predict future trends. Look at the past population rates, present, and also what are some of the predictions for future population. So areas to be look, looked at. Get some figures relating to each of these different things. Say you chose 20 years back and you went, okay, this is my past population. What was the birth rate, say, 20 years ago? Okay, in 2000. What's well, death rates? It's natural increase rates. What was happening with regards to migration 20 years ago? It's age structure, fertility rates, infant mortality rates. Where are people located at this point? Then, say, look at maybe 2019, 2020. How have these changed? What's happened to the birth rates and why? What's happened to its age structure and why? Or Life expectancy, has it increased? Has it decreased? Population density in certain regions, what's some of the reasons for this? And then third part, again, what's going to happen in the future? Okay, if you've got an aging population, what do you think would happen to birth rates, for example? Or death rates? Um, so you need to do this, but also you can use a number of different diagrams to illustrate this. You can use graphs to illustrate this, maps to illustrate this. You think of the things that can enhance your report. The second part of the report is still focusing on the same country. You've now looked at the population. The third part is um, you're focusing on the environmental problems faced by your country. What's the major problems that your country faces? Is it water? Is it air pollution? Is it problems of, uh, say, a spillage of oil in a certain area? Is it um, overuse of the soil and soil erosion? But with regards to this, this is not very, it's not supposed to be very general. What you need to do is find a very specific to your country's problem. If you're going to talk about air pollution, talk about where it um, what are its sources within your country? What areas are affected? Okay, these sort of things. If you're talking about water pollution, which rivers? What factories are polluting? If you're talking about soil erosion, what areas are affected by soil erosion? What's causing that soil erosion? What's the implications on humans around those areas? Or it could be any of these things, but you know, pick some major areas. Say if you were doing somewhere like the Ukraine, you might think, okay, I'll, I'll focus on Chernobyl's, the nuclear power um, disaster that occurred. Or you think about, say, Bhopal in India. There was a chemical um, environmental problem. Or many, many different things. Think about what's some of the things that have happened in your country. What's happened? Okay, and then task four. So you've looked at the major environmental problems. You've also looked at um, the population and how it's changed over time. The conclusion of your report should focus on, you should conclude the paper stating how you think that population um, structure will influence the environmental problems. Or you can finish it by how the environmental problems will affect the future population or demographic structure. Demography is the study of population.
population. So when you're searching for information, you might want to put in um, the term demographic data within whatever country you're doing. Okay. Task five, you need to use graphs, maps, illustrations to enhance your text. These may must be referenced within the text. For example, don't just throw in as many, many diagrams as you, you can find online. Say in your text, is it enhancing your way in your work? Okay, is it enhancing your work? Are you going to um, reference it? For example, figure one shows a map of things like this. And then the grading for this, task one, that, that introduction. Okay. Task one, introduction. Task two, is population. Task three is the environment. So those are the two major ones. Task four, this conclusion, is 25 points. So you need a, a comprehensive conclusion. It's not two words, three words, it's comprehensive. And task five, have you used appropriate diagrams? Okay, and then there's a gra grading scale, A, B, C, D, depending on how many points you get. Okay, and like I said, report is due October 20th. I have also put up a, um, a site just to get you started. Okay, so some information you can use relating for your actual assignment. Some of the things, some of the places where you can get information is you could get maybe from some government sources in your particular country. You could type in things like environmental problems in. You could use um, things like the uh, United Nations or you could use the World Bank have resources. So there's a number of different sources out there. OK, and this is just one useful link to get you started. So if we click on this link, what we'll see, it comes up with the uh, US Census Bureau. Um, and what you can do here is you can look at your country. Say you were, you were doing, for example, um, you were doing Algeria. You could get a demographic overview. And the good thing about this also is it's got a number of different years. So you can get, say you were, you were looking at 2000, you would hold command. And then you could do 2020 but it, what is also good it goes forward I could do 2040 and then if you submit what it will do is just give you some ideas of figures within your country okay some of the things that I mentioned and if you're unsure <clears throat> of what these different things mean things like for example total fertility rate you click on this that will give you a definition. Total fertility rate, the average number of children that would be born per woman if all women lived to the end of their childbearing years and bore children according to a given set of age and uh, age specific fertility rates. So these sort of things. Also, what you can do from this website is it also, same sort of scenario, say we're doing Algeria again, it has what's termed population pyramids. I will come back to this, but say you wanted to look at the age structure of a country, say I just like looking at 2014 and 2020 in Algeria. If you click, it will produce these pyramids. And these age pyramids, as we go through, you'll understand they're great for showing the age structure. This is females in the country in 2014. This is males. This is different age groups. Okay. And this is in 2020, how it's changed. And you will be expected to sort of identify some of these changes. OK, I hope this helps. If you have any concerns, contact me via the general concerns and I'll give you some ideas or overviews. OK, speak to you soon.